FickamRepair.com. We're all in this together. Hey guys, Ed here at Fickham Repair again. Talk to you about Fickham Longevity. A call we get, oh, I don't know, somewhat regularly, is, hey, I got your new shiny Fickham here. It's awesome looking, beautiful. I so appreciate it. I remember getting it. It was so wonderful. Uh, it's just pretty and shiny and beautiful. But I put it in my truck and I literally made it 10 miles down the road and my truck just shut off and now I've got a U0105 code lost communication with Thickham. So I don't know if something happened in the mail or, or it just got bostled around a little bit, but uh, can I return this thing and get another one or do you see what happened to it or whatever? Very, very, very common call that we get. Now, when we send out Thickhams, there's uh, little yellow and red tags on these things and they talk about, there's a warning on the labels that talks about, hey, please go ahead and um, make sure if you're going to do any kind of high pressure oil system work uh, to go ahead and purge the air out of the system before you uh, before you let any voltage come in to the thick. And it's right there on an iridescent yellow tag and a red tag to go with the talks with us to warn about this eventuality. So we just got this call today. Um, a young lady down in Texas, you know who you are. <laughs> and she says, yep, I put your Fickham in and it ran great, but I still knew I had an injector problem. So I took it to, over to the local Ford dealership and the Ford dealership uh, put the injector in and they said, yeah, it ran great for a little bit, but then it just died. And yeah, they, they, they uh, you know, they say, well, it's an aftermarket Fickham. That's the whole problem, right? And it's like, oh my God. So, you know, the fact of the matter is that if we dig deeper on this, that what we're going to find because what we always find, we've yet to find anything different actually, is that the tech that worked on it just didn't know what they didn't know. And so there is a Fickham Relay, um, we'll put in a link to relays in the description below, uh, it's 40 bucks, change it over once, once every 100,000 miles. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to remove the Fickham's Relay from the fuse box. It's just sitting there to the uh, driver side of the master cylinders. Pop the little cover off. It's only about yay big. Pop the cover off and pull the relay. You know you got the right one because you won't have injector buzz key on engine off. And before you even start your injector job, before you even start your high pressure oil pump job, before you even start your dummy plugs, your standpipe, any job that involves cracking open the high pressure oil system, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and yank the relay. That way you just don't forget. So here's what happens. It's a 1,350 amp or so in rush current to get your starter to start spinning. Holy crap. I mean, that's a lot of amps, I don't care who you are. And it's about 300 amps to keep it spinning. That's a lot of amps too. And it can take up to three minutes of a combined um, engagement time of, of the starter in order to enable the possibility of getting enough air purged out of the high pressure oil system to, to allow the truck to start. So right in Ford's documentation, it says, hey, go ahead and yank the Fickham's relay out and crank on it um, to purge the air out. So what you do is you hook up battery chargers, you're all done, you're with your job, and you're like, good, good job out of me, I put it all back together again, you know, and I'm ready to start the truck. And in your excitement, you can forget to pull this relay out. And you know, there's so many texts that say, well, I've, I've been doing this way for years, and there's a problem, are. Well, a lot of the uh, reason is, is there's varying levels of damage that you're gonna do depending on how much air needs to be purged out. So what you do is you say, I don't wanna have problems in, my, in life. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna kill the Fickham. I don't want my customer to have to tell me that, they, that I owe them a Fickham now. And by the way, if this is your own truck and you don't wanna have problems for just you, what you do is you say, yeah, 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 no, I'm not doing this. And what you do is you go ahead and you yank the relay from the Fickham, um, from the fuse box, and that actively prevents the Fickham from ever seeing supply side voltage. Now there is an alternative, during cranking, there is a alternative method you can elect to do. You can elect to use the remote start engagement wire on the passenger side fender wells, and a lot of folks will do that, passenger fender well, and a lot of guys will do that. The problem with that is that doesn't, to just engage the starter, get it manually turning over, and that way the high pressure oil pump is pumping um, and getting rid of this air, purging the air out, so that's like the point. The problem with using the remote start engagement wire as a method is it actively does nothing for you, actually, to go ahead and allow any voltage whatsoever to go to your injection pressure regulator valve. So when it's pumping and pumping and pumping and not developing high pressure oil adequately, um, it goes ahead and it commands it fully open, which is 85% stuff for some unknown reason. I don't know why they don't just do it 100%, but they don't, so whatever. So it never gets to 85% when you use the 
remote start engagement wire that you just disconnect and then touch the one lead on the passenger side battery. So the folks that suggest that that is a method, they either are um, lazy, <laughs> they're misinformed, or, um, or they just don't know this trick. And so what you do is you go ahead and, because what you're doing actually by doing that also, you're forcing your starter to spin over way more than it has to, right? Because half of your output of your high pressure oil pump is making it right back down to the oil pan. Well, we don't want that, right? And so what you do is you yank the Fickham's relay, you put a battery charger on your batteries, uh, or battery, whatever you got, and just anything to offset the draw is plenty, right? Just something. Uh, even if it's a little 15 amp charger, it's something. And you crank on the truck just, you know, 15 seconds on and 45 seconds off. If you want to minimize the draw on things, I suppose you can unplug the two plugs off the glow plug control module. There's no sense in sending power to the glow plugs. Obviously, you don't want the thing to start, right? And so you, you do that just 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, and you do that until you see 500 PSI of injection control pressure on your gauge. It can take up to three minutes. You're talking about 12 times trying to get it to go. And you know, if you, if you hear your battery starting to say, hey, help me, <laughs> stop it please, right? Then you go ahead and you give them a rest or whatever. But you do this until you see 500 PSI of injection control pressure, PSI, or over one volt ICP voltage if you want to do, do it that way. Uh, after you see 500 PSI, and by the way, if you don't see 500 PSI, you've got a problem. So fix, fix that problem. Maybe, maybe your pump got, didn't get installed right, or you got a bad one on the box or whatever the heck. But uh, you know, you got, you, got, you got a problem. So but after you see 500 PSI of injection control pressure, then go ahead, let the batteries recover on the charger. After they've had a chance to recover, then go ahead and um, come back to the truck maybe 30 minutes later after you talk to the wife and whatever else, right? And, um, and then crank on the truck again another 15 seconds or so, pop the relay in and your truck will fire right up and you won't have to become my customer for the FICM or you won't have destroyed a perfectly you know, fancy, shiny new one, right? And so uh, that's the, go the end game that you guys just don't have problems. So what ends up happening, it's a lot like if you played baseball and you're at home plate and it's a swing and a miss and you were going for the fences and if you haven't played ball, you don't know this feeling, but it's like, this god awful, somebody ripped your arms out of their sockets. I'm like, oh, mother of God, <laughs> right? It hurts. And it's the same way for the MOSFETs, for the metal oxide field effect transistors in the decision making board and the logic board of the FICM when you go ahead and do this. And so what happens is the FICM really gets energized the moment you get FICM sync, right? Which is going to happen is there's blips of 500 PSI and so what happens is this thing says okay yeah great I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and give voltage out to the injectors but now there's no back end resistance to it and you end up frying the thickum. We see it multiple times a week and it's about time we got a video all on it. So I hope this helps somebody avoid all this pain and consternation for you and um, just go ahead and uh, yank the relay for the thickum after you've done I mean, high pressure oil system work, or better yet, do it before that we don't forget. Crank on it until such time as you see 500 PSI. Now, to minimize how long it's gonna take, maybe what you wanna do, like if you're doing an oil cooler, for example. Oh my word, I mean, that's a lot of stuff that's gotta leave the building, right? Because you're cleaning all that dry. And uh, so what you do is you go ahead and you take the oil filter cap off and you add oil through the oil filter housing to fill up that whole volume, that whole cavity, just to minimize how much cranking you're having to do because your high pressure oil pump is a high pressure, low volume pump. And so it takes a while, right? So you can just fill it through, you can do, you're doing an oil change anyway when you're doing injectors, right? I mean, like, right? Uh, but you're, as long as you're doing it anyway, you might as well go ahead and, um, and just solve, you know, s you know, minimize how much time it takes to crank. If you don't have gauges, why don't you have gauges? Links below, right? Uh, but if you, if, you, if you don't have gauges, just three minutes of this. So 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off until you get three minutes of crank time. If you do have gauges, just until you see 500 PSI, and then start the truck uh, You know, at, uh, after the three minutes is up, or after you see 500 PSI, put the relay back in, and, and, um, and then you should be good to go. So okay, so crank it to see 500 PSI, let the batteries rest, crank it again for like 15 more seconds or something after the, after the batteries come back to life a little bit on the, on the charger. Put the relay back in, crank it, turn the key, your truck will fire right up and you won't have any problems. You'll still have to go for a spirited drive afterwards to purge the rest of the air out, but at least you won't have put your victim in harm's way. All right, you can avoid having to become my customer. 
So FakerPrepare.com, we're all in this together. If you like this content, please do like and subscribe, tell your friends all the things, right? And recognize we're far more than Fickums too. We sell 16, well, I mean, I don't know. We sell probably 16 million parts for just the PowerStroke 6 liter platform. We rep for essentially everybody in the space. So whatever you need, we got you. Never a goal to sell you stuff, just a goal to tell you stuff, okay? So we're all in this together. Thank you so much. Uh, and please do like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications when we come out with new videos. And uh, rubber side down, okay? Thanks very much.